Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You know, some people have said that you're the only Bible some people will read. And so what I want to do for this show is I've actually reached out to some of my former guests and asked them to send me in a video uh, just sharing a little bit of their testimony of, of what, did God, what has God done for them. And uh, just to kind of encourage your faith, I know that I love hearing faith stories, and, and we could all stand to trust God more. We could all stand to believe God for more. Welcome to The Kindling Fire. My name is Troy Mangum. God is preaching a sermon to the world through people's lives. People's experience, history, and testimonies all point to some amazing attribute of God that you too can experience. I interview revolutionaries, fire starters, and troublemakers. This podcast is here to be a voice of encouragement in your life. A voice that says with God you can and with God you will step into the abundant life. So let's get rolling. Uh, but I'll just start with actually a friend of mine who did not come on the show. It's actually um, a close friend of mine. And uh, I was able to kind of have a front row seat for some of the things that God did in his life. And let me kind of get into it. So basically, it was about guiding him into a new job. Um, you know, all of us work somehow, uh, uh, some way, and, you know, God cares about those details. So a year and a half prior to a change that God was leading him to, he had a series of three dreams. I'm going to tell you what the dreams are and then kind of how it all kind of played out. So uh, a year and a half prior to this event of him getting moved from one position to another, um, he had these three dreams. And the first dream uh, effectively was uh, he had effectively had a dream that he was, uh, God was removing leaders at his company and setting up other leaders according to his will. And he was going to, and in this process, it looked like it was very clear that he was going to get pushed out. Uh, so that was the first dream. Uh, the second dream was about some impending events that would sort of like economic events that would that would shift the company and the business, and it would actually put them in a rock and a hard place. Uh, so because of these economic factors or business factors, they were going to get uh, be put in a very difficult spot. And uh, and he testifies that six months prior to the change that God uh, had him make, that's exactly what happened. So in the third dream, um, he essentially was um, uh, looking for a, a key on a keychain. And as he was looking around looking for this key, he found uh, a key um, chain that was actually an ornamental key chain that was shaped like a key. And written on the ornamental key chain was, God always opens one door before shutting another. And so uh, this is how, um, and then I remember there was another, I don't know if it was a series of dreams or somewhere else, but that um, he, I think he had a dream where I think like Coach Wooten or somebody was calling him and uh, the dream was, when the call comes, pick up the phone. And uh, it was a very, very vivid dream. And so, so you know, as dreams go, you kind of, for him, he's pretty diligent about logging things that he dreams and kind of like, you know, Lord, are you saying something? So he kind of honestly had forgotten about some of these dreams. And, and then as the company started to morph and change and get into a situation where leadership was actually removed uh, dramatically and new leadership was put in place, the economics of around this company started to change and put them in a very difficult spot. And he was getting this phone call from a friend saying, hey, I have an owner of a company or CEO of another company uh, that really wants to talk to you. And, and when all these factors started to come to play, a year and a half later after these dreams, uh, one morning he was starting to contemplate all this and like, I wonder if this is related. And and actually, uh, let me back up. He, he started to think about it and his wife told him, hey, I wonder if this is related to the dreams that you got. And then he went into work that morning and one of his colleagues who was a Christian said to him, I wonder if some of the stuff that's going on in the company is related to those dreams you had. Well, sure enough, 
Um, when the call came from the CEO, he answered it, and it was a very quick transition from him going from this company to um, another company. And so uh, the the miracle of provision here was that he had accepted um, the offer from a new company and was about to write his resignation letter. And um, before he hit, hit the send button, he had a really strong check in his spirit that he should not send this. Um, and so I think that was on a Friday. He knew he was going to be going to a new company. He had this check in his spirit not to send it. And so he didn't send it. So that Monday, following Monday, he was calling the office and he was let go. He was actually fired because of the, the situation the company had gotten in and they, they had let him go. But, but there, was a there was a severance package that he had negotiated prior to joining the company. And they said, because, um, because uh, we're letting you go, we're going to honor that severance package. And then they you know, ended up, I, I'm not sure what that was, but I think it was like getting paid for six months or something like that. And, and he was already transitioning into a new role. Had he sent the email, uh, he would have negated... Uh, by resigning, he would have negated the entire situation. So what can we learn from this? And hopefully you'll have faith for this, that God knew he was going to transition a year and a half before it actually happened. God showed him signs of the environment, sort of like the signs and seasons, uh, signs of the times, if you will, in his company. And then uh, when it was time for action, he used people that were close to him to remind him of these dreams that he had had. And, and then God guided him to a point where not only did he protect him, quote unquote, from one job to another, but he ended up blessing him on the way. Think of the Israelites leaving Egypt. So I hope you enjoy that, that testimony. Uh, I love those testimonies. They, they're so, uh, they get me so fired up. And he's a friend of mine, so I just kind of sat there like, oh, my Lord, the Lord has just showing you so much love. So um, so for this next section, this is a guy named Joseph White. He came on the show um, quite a while ago, and I believe the podcast, the, the episode he was on was uh, every uh, Seeing Miracles Every Day or Everyday Miracles because he had walked with God so closely, or him and his friends, um, that they were just seeing miraculous things happen on a week-to-week -week basis. And it's just this extensive testimonies of all these miracles that God did. Well, I'm going to have, he's going to share a little bit of also of how God guided through a dream uh, to some decisions that he had to make in his own life. So let's go ahead and listen in. Hey, Troy, Joseph White here. Hope you're doing well. And hope this testimony will be a blessing to you and all of your listeners. Here goes. Uh, back in 2012, I started writing a book and I, I put it down and then started writing again and put it down and writing, wrote some more. And then finally uh, finished recently, submitted my manuscript to a publishing company and they accepted it. So with excitement, I shared that with friends and relatives. And uh, there was one particular set of relatives that immediately said, hey, we want to help you. Uh, what kind of contracts are you looking at? And I said, well, on this one particular company, there's four different contracts. There's a, a $6,500 contract, an $11,000 contract, a $14,000 contract, and a $16,500 contract that would have, you know, all the different things, uh, you know, in it. And so um, they said, hey, whichever one you want to go with, we're going to help you. I was like, wow, you know, thank you. I said, well, look, here's the thing. I, you know, Jesus' model to us is, Jesus said, I only do what I see the Father doing. So I shared with him, I said, thank you so much for your willingness to bless me, but I really want Jesus to tell me which one he wants me to go with. So I said, I'll, I'll update you as I hear more. And so as I was spending time with the Lord throughout the month of November, I heard the Lord tell me, you need to wait until after the first Sunday of Advent which happened to be Sunday, November the 28th, 2021. You need to wait until after that day to before you even attempt to make a decision. So I was like, okay, so I'm just waiting. And I get to Monday, uh, November the 29th, and that morning I wake up from a dream. And in the dream, the only thing I remember is hearing the word borrow. 
So I was thinking, when I woke up, I, I remember in the dream, someone said out loud the word borrow. And as I woke up and I remembered that part of the dream, you know, I couldn't help think that it was connected back to my relatives who said, hey, we're going to front you the money. So I would be borrowing the money from them to pay for one of those four contracts. So if I, if I did indeed go with that publishing company, because I was still trying to discern, do I go with that publishing company, this publishing company, or do I self-publish? So I finally discerned which way God wanted me to go, which publishing company. And then um, I have that dream, so borrow. Later that day, on Monday, November the 29th, the Lord says, I want you to go back and reread the sermon notes from Pastor Bill, your senior pastor, reread his sermon notes from Sunday, October the 3rd. And so October the 3rd, 2021, here are my sermon notes that I actually wrote down. Go borrow from your neighbors. Now here's the thing. I just had the dream, borrow. I'd been asking the Lord all month, Lord, is it okay for me to borrow money to publish this book? So I have that dream and I hear the word borrow. Number two, the Lord directs me after the first Sunday of Advent. So on Monday, November the 29th, he says, I'm awakened from the dream that says borrow. Number two, go reread the sermon notes from October the 3rd, which says, go borrow from your neighbors. Now, you remember that set of relatives that said they're going to uh, front me to money? Guess what? They live right across the street from me. They're my neighbors. Go borrow from your neighbors. And then I add on my sermon notes, borrow not a few. Now, when I read that, here's what jumped out at me. Of the four contracts, I knew that I was not supposed to go with the one that was the least. And so then if the story gets even more exciting. Uh, later that evening, I hear the Lord say, pick up your journal from March 2021. So March 2021. And he says, start reading through it. And here's what I discovered on Thursday, March the 11th, 2021. I had written down at the bottom of my notes, it says, day 335, Wednesday, December the 1st, 2021. How blessed is he who keeps waiting and attains dot, dot, dot. Now, as I read back through that journal entry, I'm going, Day 335, Wednesday, December 1st, 2021. How blessed is he who keeps waiting and attains. I don't even know why I wrote it down. But when I read that, I knew God wanted me to wait until December the 1st to make a final decision regarding the other three contracts. So here's what happens on December the 1st. I read, among other things, this from a prophetic word. Wednesday. December 1st, 2021. I am fulfilling your very destiny right now. And he says, your, your very destiny. It will be highest heart's desire, greatest dreams fulfilled. I say to you now, 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. That is is the ex exponential increase of territory I am giving you and enlarging around you. I am making you a wide receiver in my kingdom. Now is the time. Now here's the thing. <laughs> 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. I was like, well, that's interesting. And here's the reason why that's interesting. If you pay the contract in full up front, they'll give you a $1,000 discount. So I had four contracts. The Lord said, borrow not a few. So the $6,500 out. So one contract was for $16,500. The other one was for fourteen, dollars And the cheapest one left was the $11,000 one. And so if you pay it all up front, you get a $1,000 discount, which means it costs $10,000. And the Lord said to me on the day he told me to wait until I am getting ready to enlarge you 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, which is $10,000. That is the exponential increase in territory I'm giving you 
and enlarging around you. And I was like, wow, so cool that God would do all of these things to direct me, to help me know which contract he wanted me to pick. I hope that's uh, a blessing to you as you take time to walk with God and talk with him uh, all day, every day, and even on into the, the night. Well, once again, I hope that's a blessing to you and uh, great to reconnect with you, Troy. Lord bless you and your ministry. Hey, the next clip we're going to hear from is from Dan Zayner. He is uh, oversees a ministry called Anthem of the Adventurer. He was on an episode called Men Need Adventure. And one of the things I want you to hear in this story, this faith story, is that sometimes things are not as they appear. So he had, um, I'll kind of let him kind of share the story, but but look for the twist in this story of things not being as they appear, because sometimes what people are saying they really need or want is not actually what the Lord really knows that they need or want. And you got to listen to the Holy Spirit to help them kind of see from God's perspective. And uh, so hopefully this uh, story will encourage you that way. Hey, Troy, uh, thanks for the idea to send you a clip here. Uh, I want to tell you a story about my friend um, who will remain nameless, but uh, we could we could talk about him off of the off of recording here. But I've uh, known this guy for a few years now, and um, he just has an incredible story of going from hardcore atheist, humanist, like trying to kind of find himself through... Uh, you know, kind of self-discovery and self-help type things uh, that a lot of people are into these days, all the way from, you know, meditation and yoga and retreats to more out there things like uh, ayahuasca journeys and psychedelics even. Um, but what changed for him was he finally forgave his father for committing suicide when he was very young. And right then... He said he felt like Jesus invade, not invaded, was in, finally invited to inhabit his consciousness. And, and he actually felt as though Jesus had taken over his mind. He's like, I don't know what this is, but this feels amazing. And I want more of it. So this guy is in his late 30s, actually probably early 40s, and super smart, lives in Princeton, and is now reading the New Testament for the first time and has just eaten it up. And with all of his mental faculties and background and study and everything, he's just seeing all of these amazing parallels to things that he's been learning and journeying through his whole life. And, and we're getting to process that together. And it's just so, so cool. Um, yeah, just an, an amazing uh, testimony to what God can do in in relationship and especially uh, between father and son, even if the father is no longer present anymore, and how uh, then Jesus can can work through that and begin healing. So uh, hopefully that is uh, inspiring to some folks out there, and uh, it's it's just been really incredible uh, to be a small part of that. Next, you're going to hear from a guy that is very like minded with Hochoka men. You've probably heard me talk about that, and uh, he came on a program called Mentoring Warriors. And uh, you're going to love it. So let's go ahead and jump in. Hey, David Riffle here, Wichita, Kansas. I'm uh, many things, but I am uh, leading a ministry here called Mentoring Warriors, where we equip guys on how to mentor and prepare young guys, warriors, for a life, period. It's a lot of what takes my uh, passion. But I'll tell you a story about how God's been working at me, and it goes back a few years. About six years ago, our daughter was getting married, and so we took our soon-to-be son-in-law on his first-ever backpacking trip up in Canada. And my son Justin and I took Aaron, and we hiked into this area and camped. And after supper, we decided to hang around the, the cove there at the lake. And my son decides to swim out to some rock and sit on it. And I'm on shore looking at my son thinking, you know what? I can do that too. So I start swimming out there, and halfway out, I start to lose all my strength. And to be honest with you, I started to drown. And the water got right up to my lips. And I thought, this is it, Lord. 
Is this the way I'm going to die? I could barely call out my son's name. Next thing I know, I feel somebody picking me up from my armpits onto that rock that was out there. And it was my son, and he saved me. I was 19 years old at the time. I'll tell you, that really grabbed me from the fact that my life is so fragile. But God placed my son there in that moment, and it really increased the bond between me and him and our new son-in-law, Aaron. Well, fast forward about six months after that, um, two weeks after my daughter and Aaron got married, I go in for some heart checkups and end up having an open heart quadruple bypass surgery. And all I can tell you is when you're in your 50s, whether you love Jesus or not, having open heart surgery rocks your world. Why am I here? What am I, what, what this is all about? God, what are you doing? What part of the story are you trying to write in my life? So it's been six years since that surgery. And God has done some radical, not just physically, on my heart and changing some things about my lifestyle. But he's, a lot of, he's done a lot of things in me in terms of my manhood, my journey with him. You know, I like what Dan Allender has to say in one of his books. Most men live an unexamined life. And the reality is God's wanting to write a story in my life. And there's some parts of that story that almost drowning in Stratton Lake up in Ontario. Uh, my open heart surgery, you know, if I had the pen and I could write the script of my life, those would not be in it, believe me. But somehow God's using things like that, even the most difficult things, to shape me more into the man that he wants me to be. And as a result of that, because of the young guys that I mentor, it has an impact on their lives. And I keep thinking about 2 Timothy 2, too, where Paul invested and poured himself into Timothy. And he says to Tim, the things that you've heard from me in the presence of many witnesses entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. That's like four generations, four generations of guys that can know Christ. And so God has really shaped my heart. He is working on me. I'm on a journey. He's put some godly men around me. And all I can say is God's at work, even sometimes in the things that seem tragic, seem unexpected, that you would never want to happen. God is even at work in those. And I'll tell you, I've gotten more hope and more encouragement because I know that the Holy Spirit is with me even during those difficult times. So that's a bit of my story. Uh, there's, there's more I could share, but uh, wish you all the best on Kindling Fire. You guys are great. You know, I have all kinds of people on this show, and I love having artists on the show. And so the next you're going to hear is from a children's book illustration artist and some of the things God is showing him about faith. Hi, hi, everyone. Happy to be back on Kindling Fire. I'm James Koenig with FreelanceFridge.com, and I do children's book illustration and other character design and stuff like that. So books about silly monsters and um, odd unicorns and things like that. And uh, I've sometimes struggled with what is this, what's the purpose behind this? Is it, does it even matter to anything? Uh, how does a bumblebee boar uh, make a difference in the kingdom of God? And God's been really working on my heart and helping me see that there are people and children out there that need just moments of reprieve or moments of joy and excitement, something that will inspire them or push them to be creative or just take them out of just the heaviness of the world because we all know how heavy it's been lately and so if I can be used through silly funny drawings and books to make a difference in people's lives or give them a moment of joy or something they can come back to and just have a laugh or a smile um, there's great value in that great purpose in that so I would encourage you, if you do things that are just happy or joyful that you make for people or create for people or inspire people with, just know that there's a huge purpose that God has behind that. 
and that you should just really lean into that more and know that um, those things might be just what somebody needs in a particular part of their life that just helps them have a little peace or reignite some joy in their lives. So that's what I would encourage you to, and that's what God's been really speaking to me about. And I hope it inspires you to do something great too. Thanks so much. Thanks, James. That was awesome. Next, we're going to go to wild man Brett Murray. He was on a uh, podcast episode called Kill the Pose. He's out of Australia. You want to hear about what God's doing with men in Australia? Check it out. G'day, Troy, and g'day, men of the Kindling Fire podcast. How you doing? It's Brett Murray here. I'm the founder of uh, Blood Brothers, and uh, that's a, um, a weekly uh, chat that we have on our WhatsApp and we also have monthly meetings which are called Bacon, Eggs and Bible which are pretty self-explanatory uh, we have 20 minutes of bacon and eggs with a coffee and life's always good with bacon better with bacon uh, then we have 20 minutes of Bible sharing sharing of the scriptures and then we have uh, 20 minutes of you know discussion, prayer and fellowship and uh, I honour the guys' time with that once a month. We meet on a Saturday morning, 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. And once the guys are, um, you know, the 8 o'clock has come around, I always honour the guys and say, look, I, know, I understand time is precious. If you need to go, you need to go. But oftentimes the guys want to hang out. And just men really need uh, ministry to men. They they need each other to be able to you know talk real life stuff, but also talk word of God as well. From that we we launched um, over the last. We're heading into our third year now. Uh, we launched the Resistance Men's Gathering, which is a, a yearly annual gathering. In we go bush in, in Australia. Here we go out bush um, in the outback, and we gather men. And um, the Resistance is based on James. Uh, four seven. Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee. And uh, you know, we want men to understand that if we're going to fight the battles that we fight in this life, especially the spiritual ones, we first and foremost got to be submitted to God. But also, we want to resist this toxic masculinity rubbish that is being touted out there. That men are toxic. To be masculine is toxic. We believe that to be truly masculine is to be truly like Jesus. And um, you know, there's nothing toxic about Jesus. So there's some of the ministry things that have been happening, what you would class as, you know, classic ministry. But also I want to share this with you, Troy. This is something that has been really uh, a faith step. Um, stepping out, you know, from the, the ministry that I run, which is based under the charity that my wife and I have founded, which is called Safe Heart Foundation. So Safe Heart Foundation run Blood Brothers, run the resistance. Uh, but I wanted to release myself from uh, the charity and being a burden to the charity via salary. I wanted to create my own salary, but I wanted to do something that would reach out into the community that would help us be salt and light. Uh, if you're caught behind the four walls of a church and that's all you do, you just stay inside the four walls of the church. You're not bringing much illumination to the world. Jesus said we're to be in the world, not of it. So I started a custom motorcycle business, Murray Brawlers. Now behind me here, this is the Monocoque uh, clay mould, the plug that's going to be uh, the, um, made into a mould for all of the bikes. We're building 30 bikes. Uh, this is the tank here. And the tank uh, moves back down into the seat. Uh, it was made out of foam. Just hit you know, normal foam blocks. And then this hard clay, moulding clay, was um, you know heated up and moulded into it. Now, to share the faith with you, the men of Blood Brothers have funded this so we can get the first bike made uh, but also learn a lot of lessons through this. Um, shaping of the foam was very much like God shaping us as men. Uh, he he saws away, cuts away, files away, sands away at the areas um, that he doesn't need in, in the areas in our life that we don't need and then um, covers it with this moulding clay. Now I found with the moulding clay, this, this real hard stuff here, um, pretty hard to work with but if you heat it up it's beautiful and malleable and, and, and can shape into any form you want it to. Now, God knows, you know, Psalm 139 says that he, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. He made us um, and he formed us before uh, we were born, formed us in our mother's womb. The days of our life are all sort of laid out before him. And so if God's made us, 
we want to do what he's made us for and, and, and in making this motorcycle mold first and foremost it was a teaching of how God makes us and he can see you know, what we're made for but secondly that we can create something that's in a male dominated industry sure women ride motorbikes but the custom motorcycle scene is still very much male dominated so we want to create something that's excellent uh, cafe racer style that uh, will produce an income for myself but also too that will be a testimony of excellence and amazing um, a community we're going to build events around this uh, this brawler is going to be finished in the next two months we'll launch the first one then we're building 29 more and it's a huge step of faith and it's just um, the men are behind it and it's having a huge impact and and secondly i had the opportunity to endorse your book troy uh fatherhood face plants every man needs to get a copy so thank you so much this is what's happening in australia and i hope everyone can be encouraged by this bless you all cheers Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. I love hearing the Word of God's promises being true in people's lives. Hey, listen, you know, I reached out to my former guest to try to get them to, hey, send me something that would encourage others with the testimony of faith. But you, the listener, can do the same thing. Why don't you email me at troy at thekindlingfire.com or you can DM me uh, on Instagram at troy underscore underscore mangum or the kindling fire, and uh, send me a testimony of faith. Uh, just make it short, you know, two to, two to five minutes, and uh, you may end up on a kindling fire episode in the future. So thanks, guys. I hope you guys were blessed and encouraged. Okay, guys, until next time, be awesome.